Let me tell you, when the government is afraid of the people, you have democracy. When the, when the people are afraid of the government, you have tyranny. The government communication strategy about COVID is very, very simple. Engender fear. Make people afraid and bend them to your will. The government wants you to be afraid. Whereas, what do we want? Freedom! To work, to travel, to see our families, and do as we please. In South Africa, they had racial apartheid. Now in Ireland, what are they looking to do? Introduce medical apartheid. Thanks, Barry McGraw, very good. And once, think about it, once the state can tell you or coerce you in any way to put a chemical or biological agent inside your body, what can they not do? What can they not do? Worse than coming into your home, forcing, for, forcing something into your body is almost beyond belief. If anybody two years ago had suggested that to you, you would have laughed as outrageous. But now these idiots in Gangster House or Leinster House, that's what they're looking to do. It's unbelievable. Might as well be living in a cage if we let these people away with that. So now they offer medical status apartheid. Take a vax before you get into a pub or before you're allowed back to work. And what else do the government offer? Poverty. They are bankrupt. Not only are they morally bankrupt, politically bankrupt, but soon we're going to be, well, we almost are, financially bankrupt. What they offer is poverty. They've already bankrupted many businesses. Many people have lost their jobs. And because of social isolation and depression and suicide, a large number of people have lost their lives. God rest them. The state, the Irish state, is happy to engender dependence. With TikTok and social welfare, they are making you dependent on the state. The state wants dependence. The Irish Freedom Party wants independence. Not just from Britain and Brussels, but also from the big state of Ireland. Okay. And the long term effect of big public spending to make us dependent is public debt. Now the figures on public debt are unbelievable. In 2007, the Irish state owed 50 billion euro. This year, the state owes 242 billion euro. That's almost 50 grand, 50,000 euro per head on every man, woman, and child in the country. Now they always the throne, the throne money around like there was. Sweets, and as, as, if it, as if it was theirs, it all comes from people who work from taxpayers. It doesn't belong to the government. It's money they take, or pretty much force and steal, of people who go to work. But what they're, what they're going to do with that debt, we all know that the state is living like a parasite off Irish workers, off the Irish taxpayer. But what they're going to do, eventually, the music of taking credit of people is going to come to an end. And when the music stops, all this money will have to be paid back with interest. And it's me, it's you, it's our children and our grandchildren who will be paying it off. And what they, the government wants, offers is debt slavery. That we are being debt slaves of the state and working for them as they give it out. So, and this is where we come to offering solutions. There needs to be a massive cut in public spending. S slash the squandering of money on projects. Look at this one, 5.9 billion on supposedly non-government organizations, which are half funded by the government these NGOs is commonly known as Quangos. 
echo chambers for government policy, for controlled, controlled dissent. Someone, I think it was John McGurk, fought, said uh, funding of NGOs was like cap for right on middle class South Dubliners. And that's, a, that's basically what it is. Oh my God, here's where, here's where the glasses come out now. So we are paying for our own enslavement by the government. In North Korea, they have one party state. What is approaching in Ireland at the minute is one policy state. Look, look what's happened over the last year and a half when you have Fianna Fáil, Greens, Fianna Gael, they're all in favour of lockdown, a hard lockdown. And what about the so-called opposition parties? As I called them before on the left, the left Wafa, Fianna Gael, Sh oh, sorry, Sinn Féin, Social Democrats, Labour, people before puberty. What they offer is one policy state. And the hegemon we are, we here are those who are opposed to the hegemon of the big state with one large political class speaking with one voice and that voice is enunciated by the press in Ireland that, which is so uniform there's no hard questions from the big press. Why is there no hard questions? Because they all went to the same schools, they married into each other, they know each other, they go to the same rugby clubs and uh, there's another thing as well, that the state, the media in Ireland are dependent on the state. Has anybody seen the amount of money that uh, regional radio are receiving off the state? They're virtually all getting 90 grand a pop, every radio station. So if you want to ask why there's no hard questions from the media, from the radio, well it's very easy to understand because he who pays the piper calls the tune and that, that is what is going on. So I call your big bag for me pal, I'm sorry. Uh, Democratic debate depends on a free media, but the Irish media isn't free. The government have to pay big money for the media, and it's your money. As I said, 90 grand a pop. And look at the hypocrisy of their argument. The state wants to introduce division and discrimination, but remember in 2018, during that uh, abortion referendum, all we heard in 2018 was my body, my choice. Mm. We don't hear that anymore now, do we? The thing is, at the time, they were referring to the life of an innocent child yet to be born. But now, they are actually discussing the body of an adult. And they want you to have no choice. They are pushing you to, against your will, without your consent, they, by various means, and the little sugar lumps, if you want to travel, if you want to get in the pub, if you want to go into a restaurant, you must get this uh, vaccine passport, which is a no-no. But look at the big world out there. Ireland is a bit like outer Mongolia. Because you, if you look around the rest of the world, look at states like Florida and Texas, in, uh, I can't it. Uh, in, in the States, they've opened up for months and they're doing well, the hospitals are empty, there's very few cases, and they're all back to work, there's no mask mandate, anything like that, and that's happening all over. And all these draconian lockdown measures which they're looking to keep in place, and for what? 17 people in ICU at the minute? Now I'm very sorry that they're there, but you can't shut down the whole of the country every time there's a car crash in Donnybrook. Only in Ireland is the politicians and the press minions allowed to create this climate of fear. It's like North Korea or outer Mongolia and it's isolation. On Thursday, just Thursday there, uh, it was a centenary of the truce, of the battle of independence. We, and think about it, people, those, our forefathers who came before us, had the courage and the will to fight for their independence, to be free of British domination.
But a hundred years on, we don't have the the or the Ireland or the people of Ireland don't have that freedom. We don't have a sovereign, independent Ireland. We don't have an independent 32 county republic. And Maliki Steenson was talking that later. But 100 years on, I'm asking you to use your brains, your energy, your voice, and most of all, your vote to get these corrupt politicians out of power and put in candidates from the Irish Freedom Party who believe in a free people and a free country. And that freedom is not just about getting out from under foreign domination of Britain or Brussels, but now it's also getting out from under the power of the big state, the big Irish state. Get it off the backs of the Irish people. So, as a solution, I'm asking you to join the party, get organised, get energetic, leave it in your local areas, especially in those four or five theatres with working class areas, <coughs> only by withdrawing votes from its establishment parties, the left WAFA, only by campaigning others to support and join the Irish Freedom Party, the nationalist movement, will you get out and put others into Leinster House who believe and work for freedom. The Irish people was, and the Irish Freedom Party will stand against the big state, big tech, big pharma, and we will seek freedom of speech, freedom to work and travel. So come and join us. The government and the left Wafa offer fear and poverty. What we seek for Ireland is freedom and prosperity for us, our children, and our grandchildren. Goromagatsa.